Lockheed Martin, we never forget the award. Yuma International Airport is proud to sponsor this year's air show. We hope everyone has a great time and enjoys the air show. And when you have time to fly, always remember to fly Yuma. Well, taxiing out now, the four Northrop F-5 Freedom Fighters from VM, uh, MVFT-401 setting up for their demonstration. These are remarkable aircraft. The Freedom Fighter is what they called it, but they also called it the Scotia Tiger, the little tiger. We're gonna depart those guys in just a little bit. And as they do, uh, keep you letting the inspiration. Tora, Tora, a shockwave will be back, and then we'll have the reenactment, if you will, of the attack on Pearl Harbor back in 1941 that brought the United States into the war. The Iroquois, well, we can see them coming from the right. The first one coming through is the Huey. That's the UH-1 Zulu, and behind it, that's the Cobra. It was designed from the skids up. It's the first ever designed uh, helicopter from the skids up to be an attack helicopter with a gunner in the front, the pilot in the back, and between the two of these helicopters, they're gonna take on the four jets. Yeah, that's right. You can see the F-5s approaching left to right. It'll be a right-to-right -right pass, setting up a one-circle or two-circle flow uh, for the defensive air combat training. So, helicopters that are moving very, very slowly and jets that are moving very, very fast. This sort of combat is, is challenging beyond belief. Yeah, absolutely. So for our role, we provide the training aid for the helo pilots in this case to get better. Uh, the, beauty, the beautiful thing about the Marine Corps is every aircraft or platform we have, we fight with it and we fight hard. Uh, so you can see in this case, Huey is pulling for the shots. You see the F-5s popping, exploding use of the vertical. That's one thing that uh, the jets are able to use. If we stay in plane and we turn with the helos, they're 100% going to outturn us inside of us and turn faster than us. However, they can come off target, two enemy aircraft jumping from behind. They have to now make a quick decision in turn direction and flow direction to be able to engage the F-5s. See the Cobra's now pulling for a shot, trying to get an acquisition with its heat-seeking missile. You know, it's interesting, these uh, helicopters have been around for a while, as have the, uh, the F-5s, but you're talking the heat-seeking missile, the Sidewinder missile, dates back to the 19th bitch and being a good combat marine. Uh, so if I see smoke in the air, I'm going to trust that smoke in the air uh, more so than I'm going to trust an electronic receiver. The interesting, one of the interesting things about the Cobra, the second helicopter going through here, there's a little gun underneath the chin of that, uh, that Cobra. And that is all has the ability to slew his 20 millimeter cannon with direct line of sight to the helmet. It's a pretty awesome capability. So in other words, if he looks to the right, the gun the aims to the right and follows his head movements? Yep, absolutely does. Ooh, so it's a look and shoot capability. These F-5s have the capability. It looks like we got sidewinders actually on the missile. The F-5s are equipped with AM-9 mic for the training simulation of that IR missile. Uh, we carry those solely and we also carry a uh, GPS transmitter pod that shows our exact location for briefing and debriefing. The F-5s are set up for a head-on pass now. Again, it'll be a right-to-right -right with the helos flowing to the south. 
It's usually about a 400 to 450 knot merge. 500 feet is the lowest we'll go to flight uh, to train with the helos. And post that, you pick a direction to turn, usually to test the flow decision making of the helicopter pilots. Boy, we're talking very, very difficult to see. The Scotia Tigers, the F5s, are uh, are quick. They're pretty nimble as well. They're relatively maneuverable, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's a pretty comparable aircraft as far as turn rate and radius. Uh, like I said, though, either way, if you stay in plane with any of these helos, they're going to outturn you, uh, potentially have a shot quicker than you are. Mini guns, it carries rockets, hellfires, an amazing sensor. And that's why you see these guys often fly in a mixed element with a Huey and a Cobra uh, to just increase the capability. For offensive and defensive capabilities. Yeah, absolutely. You can see an offensive attack. Oh, yeah. By Huey. And a left to left push. Cobra's attempting for a shot there. We'll have to take that back to the debrief to see if it actually was valid or not. <laughs> I'm fascinated by the ability of a helicopter to take on a jet. Yeah, like I said, the beautiful thing about the Marine Corps is every airplane, every platform, every weapon system we have, we fight to uh, the teeth with it. So that's what these guys are doing. They're going out to max perform their aircraft to be the best that they possibly can. If that scenario ever does arise, they max perform their aircraft to kill and also survive. That's a quick turn. I think we got us a parade pass coming from the right here. Or are they on an attack run? Do they still have, can they see at a great distance? Can they keep their eyes on these? Do they have radars or other methods of uh, keeping an eye on the jets? Yeah, it's, uh, it's people and eyeballs in all these aircraft right now. Uh, the radars help in the F-5s, but for the helicopters, you got, uh, you got your pilots and crew chiefs with eyeballs and they're trying to pick up tally. First person to see usually is the guy that wins. Fortunately for the helos, the F-5s are really smoky motors, so you can pick them up pretty far out. You know, that was a problem early on in the jet age. The turbo jet engines had smoke that could be seen miles away. Just for uh, the crowd here, the VMX-1 pilots operate in the H-1 Zulu Cobra. You have Captain Andrew Hammer Wing, uh, 10 years of service combat veteran in the Marine Corps. For the UH-1 Yankee from VMX-1, you got Major Christopher 100 feet, and they'll separate four seconds spacing in between aircraft. the landing gear and then they can land one right after another keeping track of one another's uh, speeds and something that they call aerodynamic braking yeah absolutely when we land the f5 we keep the nose off about 10 degrees nose high and that's uh, an aerodynamic braking what that does it slows the aircraft down using the aerodynamic forces rather than the pressure on the wheel brake so it saves the wheels it saves the brakes uh, it looks pretty cool when you're doing a wheelie down the runway uh, but primarily we use it for uh, stability and landing. If there's a wet runway where you're in ice skid, your brakes aren't going to work as well, we'll aerodynamically brake to about 100, 110 knots before we put the nose wheel down. Normal approach speed is about 170, 175 knots on a short final here, and then you'll touch down anywhere about 150, 160 knots. So 150 knots and convert that to miles an hour and 65, 70, uh, just under 175 miles an hour. Yeah, it's, it's moving pretty quick. Yeah, that's very, but it's a small wing, you know, it doesn't, uh, it, it, if you had a big wing, like like the A-10 Thunderbolt 2, they can land at a slower airspeed and get stopped much more quickly. But this short, stubby wing uh, gives it a great deal of speed, a great roll rate, and some, uh, and th th those advantages in air combat that are very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. And these jets, if you look at them, they're just very slick. We don't hang anything off the bottom, very streamlined. We call it a uh, Coke bottle fuselage, which is made specifically for supersonic flight. Uh, the jet goes fast. It doesn't like to slow down, but you're looking at Mach 1.5 uh, regularly for a supersonic interceptor, which is what these are. 
And as they taxi by, the different colors are very important as well, aren't they, Hank? Yeah, we have uh, several different colors. We use that for the camouflage uh, aspect of our mission. It, it's a little bit harder to see us. Uh, the green and the brown are great for out here with a look down over the desert just uh, east of the Gila Mountains here. The blue and the gray are great for camouflage and the look up. It just gives